Riding 100 miles for the first time can be a great breakthrough on your cycling journey. If you're new to the sport, then welcome. And maybe 100 miles is your next step. It can be a big challenge though. It's definitely harder on the legs, obviously it's longer, and it does bring you further afield, opening up the possibility for some epic, epic routes, just like this. Oh, you're in for a treat today, folks. I'm gonna share with you some of my own personal tips on how to best manage a 100 mile ride. Whether you're new to the sport or just looking to manage your next 100 mile ride a little bit better. So come on, follow me. I've been told I have a good draft. Still waiting on some of the beers I made actually about that, that good draft, I tell you. I will be setting off from home, heading out to Clonmel and the beautiful climb of the V riding down to the coast and up through Dungarvan. Quick stop on my favourite beach, Clonay Strand, before the final leg home. Okay, right, I'm getting ready to leave here and I'd say my first point is to try to leave early if you can. The reason for leaving early is basically, you get out there, you get a good amount of miles in the legs and by the time it gets to lunchtime, you've got a good fair whack of your ride done. So you don't kind of get two hours in and start feeling really hungry and want to stop. So you can get the bulk of your ride in the bank. Also, you want to get a nice hearty breakfast in you. I always opt for lovely porridge oats. I normally have about 100 grams, cook it with milk and water, and add a few toppings, maybe bananas, cinnamon, a bit of peanut butter. Get that energy in the legs, ready for a big day out on the bike. Right, most importantly as well, sun cream. Never leave for a ride without sun cream. Even when it's raining, I put sun cream on just in case the sun comes out. So, without further ado, Okay, right, I'm off. The weather is looking beautiful today. Unlike my last long ride where I got absolutely soaked. Anyway, I've chosen a route on Kamut that takes in a bit of County Waterford and also going into County Cork this time. So I'm going up famous V climb. This is your first 100 miler. Try and pick a kind of flatter terrain if possible. A really hilly 100 miles is a tough ask. So maybe start out on a flatter route to begin with. Throw a couple of climbs in, because it does break up the route and it's nice to have a few downhills as well to recover on, but just don't go too crazy. And enjoy the view. Hey, hey. finally good weather. Another little tip as well, is maybe start out in a group if you can. It means you can kind of get a bit of shelter at the beginning of your ride. And then even if the group isn't doing the full 100 miles, you can quite easily turn off and finish, finish up on your own. Now I'd be doing this as well today if I was riding in a group, but as you can see, it's just me. But hey ho, solo rides are fun too. First time out of the county on my bike. Hey, there we go. It's been a while since I've crossed the county boundaries. New territory for the first time in three months. Right folks, I've done 23 miles now. So it's been relatively easy. I've taken my pace down a notch, saved my energy for later on the ride. Because I'm about to be going into those mountains over there. Beautiful part of the world to ride your bike. I'm looking forward to showing it to you. But don't forget to eat in these early stages. It's so important. I can't tell you how important it is. Don't think of your food as like, don't ration it. You want to get it into you. The, the more earlier on the ride, the better. If you save it until the end of the ride, it's too late. Even if you're starting to feel tired and hungry, then you have a load of food, you'll probably just feel even more lethargic as a result and you just end up slogging home. So the best strategy, get as much food as you, as you can into you. Just think of it as like filling the petrol tank up. You don't want to be running on empty for too long. It'll just do too much damage, so. I've had one bar and two, no, I've had two bars and one banana already, first 23 miles, just to get an idea for you. And I'm having another bar now. So trust me, 
it will pay dividends towards the end of the ride and you'll feel so much better as a result. Okay, right, here we are at the bottom of the V, one of my favorite climbs actually in the whole world. Just heading up there, you would maybe see the road if there was a car on there. And then we head over the border back into Waterford. So I'll get going. It's like the jungle up here, I love it. Reminds me of Costa Rica. This is Ireland at its greenest. Okay, so I'm about 35 miles in. I've just taken a little break just to admire the view. And you need to do this on your century. I thought I'd just take a moment as well to explain to you, even if the weather is amazing when you set off, you kind of want to plan just in case it turns a bit. I always like to bring just a light, short, short sleeved jersey, sleeveless jersey, I should say, not short sleeved. And just for any eventuality, once you do start climbing, as I am now, the weather might get a bit cooler. You want to keep the wind off your chest, which will potentially give you a bit of a chill. It's easy to stuff in your pocket, or if you haven't got space in your pockets, you can just stuff it in the top of your jersey, like that. Gives you a bit more space. Okay, as well, if you're going for a real long ride, any long ride really, you want to make sure your equipment is in good working order. So I gave it a good wash before I set off. Tires for any slits or any stones, bits of glass that might have wormed their way in there just in case. Also make sure you bring supplies. I always like to bring an extra tube with me on a longer ride. So in here I've got my Topic burrito wrap. Hope you can see that. So I've got two tubes in there. I've got an Allen key set and I've got a chain link tool just in case I break the chain so I can sort myself out. I've taken the opportunity to have another little stop here because it is absolutely beautiful. I'm getting more food in. This is a jam, peanut butter and honey sandwich. Don't fault a bit of homemade food because you need your energy in you. Again, I stress this again, you need so much food in you. Focus on carbohydrates, flapjacks, gels, bars. You just need to get the energy into your legs if you're gonna make it through your century. And if you can, pick a nice scenic spot to enjoy a bite to eat. There's nothing wrong with that. Energy bars are also great because they're easily digestible and they're really convenient in a simple packet. You put them in your pocket, fit quite a lot in actually. You pack a lot of carbohydrates in a small package. So that's why I love them as well, especially on a long ride. Just be careful not to stop for too long as you will find it difficult getting going again. So I kind of like to be brisk with my stops and get up and off the road again. So come on, Connor. On that note, onwards we go. And take your rubbish home with you. In your pockets, there's no excuse for littering. Never, ever, ever put it in your pockets. I do not want to see any littering about, otherwise I'll come and find you. I'll be like a big grumpy, ugly troll following you around until you pick your litter up and put it in the bin. So, you hear that? Back into County Waterford. There we go. Don't forget to drink. Similar to food really, little and often. Just keep sipping throughout the day and throughout your ride. If you can, use a drink mix that will replace any electrolytes lost through sweat and even better use one with some carbs mixed in as well as it will help keep those energy levels topped up. It's just another way of getting the carbs into you which is so important on a long ride. And I think if it's really hot, try and aim to drink maybe two bottles every hour and if it's milder temperature, aim for maybe two bottles every couple of hours. But don't forget to drink. Another good quick little tip is to try and find out before your ride if there's any places en route where you can refill your water bottles for free. Churches, for instance, are a great little tip. They often have a fountain on the outside of the building that you can actually fill your bottle up with. And also do a quick Google search of your little country and find if there's anywhere where there's listings or water fountains where you can refill your bottles. In Ireland, for instance, there's a site called refill.ie and it will list all the stations where you can refill your water bottles. And it just saves you having to stop and go into a petrol station or a shop, buying single-use plastic to fill your bottles up. It's, it's 
It's a shame to use single plastics and also, it means you're wasting time when you could be out on your bike. And don't forget to drink. Thought you were going to forget there, sorry. Okay, right, I've been a mind of you too long now. Come on, Connor, time to crack on. How many miles have I done? 40 miles, so 60 miles to go. Right, resume. Ha ha, another day in the country. Lots of cows, lots of sheep. Beautiful area around here. I'd love to bring my gravel bike here actually and go up into the mountains. So I used to do a lot of my efforts on this road actually, especially if I had a headwind. Actually a really long climb from this side and you'd be slogging away, these roads are so heavy. No one really knows until they come here to Ireland and experience these kind of back roads. Okay, I'm starting to feel it in the legs now, but I've just knocked out a good amount of miles. I've got 17.2 miles to go. I don't think it I don't think it really matters who you are, but if you do 100 miles on your bicycle, it's going to get tough at one point or another. So you're going to need a bit of mental strength. Just cuz you're starting to feel it, don't let your head drop, keep your morale high. And also, I think the benefit of using a route on a bike computer towards the end of the ride when you're beginning to tire, you don't get kind of led astray onto any main roads or make any wrong turns. You can plan your route to be on back roads and minor roads to finish off your 100 mile ride, which means when you're starting to get tired and lose concentration, you're on quieter roads, you're not on busy roads. And in my opinion, that's a lot safer. Last little push now, better crack on, come on. Come on legs, you can do it. I'm still having fun though, I promise ya. That's what it's all about. It's kind of like the paradox, the cycling paradox. We love it, but it hurts. But then you get views like that and it all becomes worth it. Right, now you are on that final push. This is a good time to take a caffeine gel. It's just a good way of giving yourself that final little boost, keeping yourself alert. Woohoo! Come on, Connor. Home time. 100 miles in the legs can be a good one. I feel alive! Woo! Now I've had to do a little detour. Road's been blocked with a load of cows. I've actually never been down this road before. Now I know why there was cows on it. Proper rough one. I forgot how hard 100 miles is. But anyone can do it, especially if you take into account some of my tips. Especially fueling, I think, in the beginning of the ride. It's so important because if you don't do it, once you get to the end, there's no way to reverse that. 100 miles, I'm still made to bring the bin up. I tell ya. Oh, I finished. 100 miles in the bank. Oh, I'm tired, but I oh, feel great to finish it off. I tell you though, I'm not as fit as I used to be, but I guess that doesn't matter anymore. It's about the enjoyment. It's about enjoying those 100 miles. And I tell you what, I'm looking forward to a post-ride beer and a, a bit of a, a burger or something. But I'd love to hear from you guys. What was your first 100 miles and what are your memories of it? Please let me know in the comment section below. And also, I think we should get a poll going on the GCN app. Have you ridden 100 miles before? Or would you rather do something a little bit shorter? Be interested to hear what you'll think about that one. Right, I'm off to find some food. I'm starving. Thanks for watching, everyone. I'll see you later. Whew. Oh, got me through legs. Thank you. Thank you. Bum, 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 bum. Because I want to film here, but this sheep is standing its ground. It's seen me and it's stamping its hooves. Oh, no, no. Yeah, see, that's what you get. That's what you get when you try and mess with this. Yeah. Jog on.